Hail cheaters. Welcome to the Always Cheating Podcast. The international break is, I don't know, halfway over. My name is Josh. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon, how are you? I'm good. I think it's safe to say that the international break is 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 close to being over. Like a yeah, lot of the European the teams windows. have already have already done their their thing. Certainly right. we'll talk about Erling Holland today. He's done his two matches. All of the England outfit are through their two matches. And yeah, I, I don't think there are too many like major injury concerns to go through. I know you've put a whole kind of list together of who's on our injury sort of well, just some sort of watch list and some some quick hits yeah yeah um yeah well, I, I gotta say yeah, josh go just just mm-hmm. just as a just to further this preamble this ice breaking session before mm-hmm. we get into it this international break hasn't hurt as hard as i thought it was going to i'm kind of taking it in stride i think so too uh you know i i sort of i stuck to my guns and last week's pot i was like do the family stuff like <laughs> like to have yeah. some family time and uh we we went shopping yesterday brandon it was great i bought a new record uh which there's a new record shop that opened up uh in in my neighborhood in park slope brooklyn and uh um it was one of those experiences where i actually didn't see any records i wanted to buy uh but then um but i kind of wanted to support the shop and i was also just in the mood to buy something you know you must know this experience brandon sure absolutely yeah. shop therapy yeah, this is how you end up with like 13 chore coats, right? Because you love the... Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It yeah. feels good. So, exactly. So I, I bought a Nick Cave album because when, when in doubt, buy more Nick Cave. He's got uh-huh. about 27 releases. And so you can basically never stop buying new... new do you new have Nick your Cave Nick records. Cave white whale? Do you have a Do you have a white whale in That's the a good Nick question. Cave universe? Um, that is a, I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay, I don't know. You know, do. I, not necessarily. I have, I have other white whales that I should say for like a later, like a really, a, an, an, an even more, um, uh, like news free podcast than this one, Brandon. Um, <laughs> yeah. we do have a lot yeah, of, we're flags. already I mean, reaching yeah. for fantasy content yeah. as, no, as no, people no. There's can lots, understand. There's lots. Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, there is lots to talk about cause I, I want to look ahead, not just at game week 12. I want to look ahead, uh, from game week 12 to 16. I mean, now we're not going to go through, you know, every single fixture across, you're not going to look at all six, you know, whatever that is, 50 fixtures. Um, but I do think that uh, the international breaks, a lot of people will be triggering wild cards this week, right? Or, mm-hmm. um, or at the very least, uh, probably have to make, I think a lot of people are going to be forced to make multiple transfers. I mean, that's a situation that I'm in right now where uh, I logged on earlier today and I knew I had a couple flags. Um, I was not expecting six flags, Brandon. Okay. A, a great, great American, yeah, great American amusement park has just turned into a, a terrible way to look at your, a terrible look for your fantasy team. Yeah. Um, and so I'll go through those in a second, but yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a good time to take stock of and look sort of several fixtures ahead. And I think this is just in general, it is, it is the best way to play fantasy, the smartest way to play fantasy. It's very tempting sometimes to be like, X team is playing this bad squad, right? Mm-hmm. And I need to load up. Like, you know, Man City are hosting Southampton. Oh, that's going to be an explosion of goals. I need to find a way to get it, you know, more than just Holland in this match. How else can I double or triple up, right? And um, they're whatever, right? And you you sort of and often that that comes back to haunt you. And um, and I think that if you're if you're you know if you're looking four or five weeks ahead, six weeks ahead, I think that five is like the magic number. I think once you go past five it just starts to get a little complicated. Like rarely does a team have a great six week run, right? It's like five, like even, even like five is kind of stretching it. But for some reason I find five to be a little, um, that's just the number that I tend to use, uh, when I, when I'm looking at, do you, do you look, you, you just look at the game week in front of you, right? You've actually never, you never know what's two weeks ahead, right? No, no. Yeah. I'm always shocked at how long the season is because I keep expecting the season to end after this, (laughs) whatever the next game week week is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, three, three game week chunks feel right for my appetite and anything beyond that feels like speculation too much yeah yeah but i i tend to lose faith and patience pretty quickly even though yeah. uh, even though you i'll turn hang on, on to players for, i i will mentally turn on people so yeah. three weeks is kind of like all you have to prove something to me okay yeah uh, so uh, well how many flags do you have in your squad right now yeah let's uh let, i'll just share my team on the screen right now for for those watching and i'll talk through it on uh, right. on the pod Looking at my team, Henderson and goal, uh, Anthony Robinson, Mikalenko, and Kansa across the back line. And these are all incredible home fixtures for my defense. 
Wolves at home for Robinson, Brentford at home for Mikalenko, Palace at home for Consa. And that's where, where Alex and his Palace fandom come in. Palace mm-hmm. not looking great right now. So then it's two flags in the midfield with Mbomo and Foden. Uh, what's the word on Mbomo, Josh? Do we know anything about this flag? Yeah, um, there actually was a quote from um, the, let's see if I can find it here. Well, so, you know, Mbomo is a, a Cameroonian international and he, uh, his manager announced that he was injured. Uh, so his manager for Cameroon it said that he yeah. was injured, unable to play. And so <laughs> that's kind of all we know. And so it could yeah. be that it's a nothing. It's one of those like, it's really more like rest and rehab kind of two weeks. Right. Yeah. Um, and other times it, it is more serious. I mean, this has happened. I think it was like, I can't remember who it was Calvert Lewin or something like, like, you know, it was like one of these like, Oh, he should be fine. And then they were out for 10 weeks. It's like a couple of, yeah. you know, it's like, so you never really know with these international break injuries. Sometimes it's real and sometimes it's not. And so we should hopefully know more in the next couple of days. I know that's a very boring answer in yeah, some cases, but, know. but all we know is he is vaguely, Flag, but he played. I think the full ninety, right in the in the last match. So. Yeah, I su- I suspect he's he's fine. He would be low down on my list of of issues to solve. Sure, Foden Foden, even if he wasn't flagged, is going to be out for me. It's Foden to Palmer is one of my two free transfers that I'm definitely going to use, and then. Say Mbomo is for whatever reason is not fit. I have Liam Delap first on my bench, who's home hosting Manchester United. Manchester United definitely rebounding, new manager coming in after the break, looking defensively sound. I am yep. very happy to bench Delap here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, rounding out the midfield, Smith Rowe, Sala, and Rogers, Holland, and Wood. And now these are the big boys. The big news from the international break seems to be uh, Premier League strikers just going off. Chris right. Wood scored two goals in one minute today against some faceless nation state in, in the Oceania Conference. Oh, good to see and, his confidence and, still high, though. You know, it's yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, it's incredible. And Holland uh, scored one earlier in the break and a hat trick. Uh, today. So is he, is he back? Is it just a matter of him being away from Man City can free up his confidence a little bit. And then once he comes back to the premier league, it's going to be the, what we've seen the last month or so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So right now squad feels relatively intact with just the two flags. I I'm hopeful of just using that one free transfer and rolling another one into game week 13. Yeah, and I think Delap is actually like you know he's fine if he has to come in and like a home match against Man United. Yeah. I actually think there's a pretty good chance he scores in that. So I, I think you know you're kind of fine if he if he comes in. This, totally. this looks like, yeah, your squad looks like a hold to me as well. I know people listening to the podcast can't see it, but you know, like you said, a lot a lot of home fixtures here. I mean, God, it's yeah, what is it? Eight out of eleven? Is that what you were? Yeah, so it's a fun spot to be. Kansa Kansa yeah. hat was <laughs> lightly flagged, by the way. He's not actually flagged in the site right now, but he was. Um, there was he had to leave. Uh, was it the England match? He had to leave with with a, like mm-hmm. a slight injury. So there could be something there too. It it seems like every international break, Kansa shows up to England camp and leaves with a a little a niggle, small injury. And it's yeah. very annoying. It's yeah. super yeah. annoying. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if he doesn't play, then Pedro Porro would come off. Uh, uh, and this is this is kind of like the narrative that's been building in fantasy in the fantasy community. This break is Spurs. Could be missing uh, Romero. They're definitely missing Mickey Van de Ven. So no first choice central defense. Is Man City finally going to find some attacking joy at home against a generally lackluster defense in Spurs, at least this this season? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But then I was, I was, you know, because I was looking at it. I don't want to turn this into the, the injuries pod. But it's kind of remarkable when you look at the Man City injury list, too. Uh, yeah. Nunez, and I'm not even including long-term injuries here, right? Like Rodri and, uh, and, uh, Grealish and others, but Nunez, Akanji, Stones, Foden, Diaz, and Ake are all flagged, right? So basically the entire back line is, is flagged. And, uh, I'd imagine at least half of those players will be able to play this weekend. So it's, I, I don't necessarily see this as like a massive bounce back, uh, match for them. Right. I think that it could be, uh, I think, you know, I think it could be a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. Again, we another we, we shall see. <laughs> yeah. So this yeah. this is my feeling with Holland is great. I have him. Uh, I'm not going to move him. Though there are some compelling cases. We've been fielding some questions from our 
supporters on the discord about like double moves to get Holland out. And the, the guys that are being brought in, I think make it worth it. Like I'm going to drop Holland and X midfielder to get, you know, Salah and Isak. I mean, these are, right. these are moves I can fully get behind for yeah. sure. But with me not having how I feel uh, major problems to, to solve, I get to roll with Holland here, but I'm still uh, planning to captain Mo Salah. Even though he's away, he's away against a, a hilarious Southampton team. And yeah, easy, just, easy captain decision this <laughs> week. Sure. I, I agree. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a gimme. Uh, yeah, I mean, my my team, uh, the the problem I have right now, and I, I won't share my screen just just because I don't feel like it. But um, the issue for me is I've, I just have a bunch of injuries in my squad right now, and I uh, so Semenyo has um, but the quote is he's nursing an injury of the patella tendon. Due to an overload of games. So to me, that sounds like should be fine. Like playing a lot of minutes as a minor injury, something he could use as an excuse not to go play yeah. uh, nationally. And, uh, and they they referenced a part of the body that uh, 99 out of 100 people couldn't point to. So is the patella, it's, pretty, it's like their shin bone or something, isn't it? Isn't that where the patella yeah, it is? is? I'm, looking, yeah. I'm actually yeah. looking at like WebMD right now. It's somewhere around the kneecap. Uh, yeah, it may. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, it's surrounding the knee. Surrounding the knee. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. Mboma, we talked about already. Vardy has a back injury, a total TBD. Who knows? Right. We'll see if we see him in, in uh, training this week. Um, and then Trent has the classic. Um, by the way, a, a new like not even new. This is a long time bugaboo of mine, but it's gotten worse. I feel like as we, as we enter the Should era play, of play like, the Josh Landon bugaboo drop yeah, yeah, before exactly. you go into this. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Uh, but it's like, it's the classic, um, I, I feel like it's like the SEO like race to the bottom or whatever, but even like sites like Liverpool echo now, like we'll write an article like where the headline is like the latest, on Trent Alexander Arnold's injury, and it's literally <laughs> nothing. It's like it might it might as well have been written by AI, right? It's yeah, like it's there's probably nothing was. there, and it's just yeah, it might have been right, and it's just a quote from seven days ago yeah. about about Trent. Like there's nothing, yeah. and then, then a zillion not, pop up ads. Yeah, and then a zillion pop up ads. It's 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 such garbage, and I it's it's so irritating to me. And then you know, I, you know. The, you know, credit to Premier Injury. So I often make fun of that website because it sounds like a hitman for hire, you know, company, Brandon. But but it's like at least like they keep this stuff updated regularly. You can actually go in there and get whatever the latest news is. You can actually like find it in a very yeah. relatively easy drop down menu. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Trent is in a race against time, Brandon, to to be ready oh for this Southampton match. The problem as a Trent owner is one, he's been uh Drek, like he's just been a, a black. He has not been the biggest black hole on my team, but he's he's mm-hmm. just one of many black holes, Brandon. We'll see if these holes all converge into oh, a super like massive we're watching black interstellar. hole. At some point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, Gargantua, exactly. That's uh, but you know the the so the problem is um, they play Southampton away, right? A match that even with a like like Bradley, who's you know he's like eight tenths tra- i mean he's quite good himself yeah. right so yes. even with bradley in there um they should be able to win that match and um then at midweek they play real madrid and then the following weekend they play man city so i don't see a lot of upside in rushing trent back for the southampton match yeah. when you have real madrid in the champions league in man city several days yeah. after that perfect right perfect opportunity to yeah. give a great steward of the cl- steward a great player at the club and connor bradley yeah. Some, yeah, uh, like way more up and coming. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. Yeah, so so I think it's. I mean, who knows? But like, it, it feels unlikely to me that um, that we see Trent this weekend, and so that that could inform my transfer decisions too. In fact, when I when I put my team into review, um, that was a move they suggested was a, a very simple uh, Trent to um, Gabriel move, uh, Arsenal's mm-hmm. Gabriel, and so uh, one of Arsenal's many Gabriels, I should say, mm-hmm. but the, the the center back Gabriel. Sure. Um, and so he's, he's the alpha Gabriel, I would, I would suggest. I know it is hard to, you know, it's, it, it's hard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they all play different positions, but when you're, yeah. you, you can't just say, I guess he's the only one who goes by Gabriel, right? Everyone else mm-hmm. he's sort of Mar- Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus. He's yeah. the only one you just say Gabriel for, right? So I guess you're right. He That's does true. have a kind of a primacy within that team. Doesn't yes. he, Brandon? Yes. So, so I might do that. Uh, I could do minus four as well. Like if Vardy is out and there's any kind of long-term issue, uh, another possible move would be to, 
do that and then actually do Vardy to Isak, uh, which is another I like it. Um, kind of fun move. I mean, if you're going to take a minus four, I do enjoy doing it for um, for forwards, right? Because it's just a little mm. easier to um, to 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 turn that return one into one goal, goal and that's, yeah, that's, yeah, uh, it's, it's you've, already you've made paid it for it. So yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, yeah. uh, you, if, if memory serves, you have a lot of money in the bank. So Trent to Gabrielle yeah. and then Vardy well, to Isak is something you could do quite easily, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. I could do both. Even yeah, I mean, I actually think I could do both with just the money that. Trent to Gabriel would would well. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be quite that much, but mm-hmm. you know, it's um. You're not willing it, to dip into your your CD fund at well, this point. Well, the, the question is, so the the reason I have all this money is because I was planning to move one of my cheaper midfielders to Saka. Yeah, and we just don't know where we are with Saka right now, and I still want to have Saka long term. Um, and I mean, it's funny we spent all this time talking about like the try to get three out of four player strategy. And it just, I haven't been able to do it because there's just so many injuries, right? Yeah. And so, uh, but the problem is if I if I make this Isak move, which I mean, like, again, I'm just throwing ideas out there. We'll see who, who's injured and who's not in a few sure. days. Um, if I make that move, it does kind of mean I've got to make another move to get Sa- right? It's like, you know, it's like I can't, then I then I wouldn't mm, get Saka until at least game week 14, right? And like, yeah. Unless I'm just taking hits every week, which like yeah, you want a great way to end up in the millions, Brandon, just start taking hits every single week. Like <laughs> every year it's like, it's like you see these like gambling things where these people hit like these 10 leg parlays, right? And it's like, yeah. oh, it's so amazing. Like, uh, I can't believe it. You know, it's a one in a million and I, you know, I bet $4 and I won 10,000 or whatever. Like the people who take hits every week and some somehow end up with an amazing rank are the people hitting these 10 leg parlays, right? In general, if you are going to lose four points every single week and everyone else is like a relative, (laughs) like, you know, in a kind of larger sense, everyone else is not losing four points every week on balance. You are going to end up behind all those other people, right? Because it's not like you're just uh, sure. In some cases you just have like, you know, three red flagged players who are just you know, they're not coming back for three months and then you've got to take a hit and there's no way around it. But often what you're doing is you're just replacing players who you don't really like anymore or want your team anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've all done that a million times. And suddenly those players return the week that you drop them. Right. I mean, this happens constantly. So I I don't want to be doing hits hit after hit, but with six flag players, I may not have a choice. So let's see where we are. um, Sounds like a a real roller coaster ride with this team if Six you catch flags, my drift buddy um so yeah so no news on Saka, and then uh just another thing i flag which is i'm i'm surprised by how many injuries uh there's a lot of issues right now with villa like they've gotten completely banged up by what seem like legit international break injuries uh, <laughs> uh onana uh pau torres M- matson and kansa although kansa we'll see about uh have all picked up injuries just on the international break alone so um, mm-hmm. They could be in a little bit. This this season's already turning into a little bit of like second season or whatever you want to call it. First year in the Champions League syndrome, yeah. right? We've seen yeah. this lots of times before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens there. So that's that's kind of where we are. Again, you know, we have more matches to go. Um, and I think you know, I th- what I want to do in a second here is just start to look ahead to game weeks twelve through sixteen. Um, I did, Brandon. Um, want to note two things. Uh, one is. Um, that we are on Blue Sky now. So if you are uh, interested in moving, li- listen, we don't talk politics on this website, Brent, or on this website, and this podcast, and any, we try not to talk politics at all in any of our platforms, okay? Like it's pretty easy to get mm-hmm. politics literally everywhere else. If you want to call me on the um, phone, I'll talk to you po- about politics yeah. oh. that way. Happy, oh, if you want to play, happy to. Yeah, if you want to play poker with us, we will talk yeah. politics happily. But I'll share uh, try- my phone number at the end of the yeah. podcast if you want yeah. to skip ahead. But we maybe felt like it was time for us to spend more time in a different social media network where when you post links, your posts don't get immediately throttled to the point where you sort of wonder mm-hmm. why you're even on that network at all, even though yeah. you've built up 50,000 followers on there. And so, listen, I, who knows what network I'm talking about here, Brendan? But we have moved to to Blue Sky. and. And I'm I'm enjoying it just because it has this kind of the the feel. I mean, this is a free. I don't mean to do free promo work for this free social media website, but um, it has the feel of fantasy Twitter like ten years ago, which uh, which is you know right right when you and I started to get into it, and um, it's kind of a chance I think to restart a little bit and kind of like 
go back to zero in terms of who you're following and who you're interacting mm-hmm. with. And I was shocked by even just like little posts, little things. Um, it feels like real humans are seeing my posts and responding again. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Maybe it'll all go away in a year, right? But it is it is fun to have that for now. So uh, we're just uh, always cheating. I think it's always cheating FPL on Blue Sky. But if you just look for always cheating, you'll find us yeah. there. So You know, it reminds me of... Uh, Lance Armstrong, when he got testicular cancer, was devastating for his career. But then he saw mm-hmm. it as an opportunity where his body was going to get really broken down by the cancer and the cancer treatment. Yep. And then he was able to rebuild his body uh, in such a way that it was perfect for mm. a cycling career. And right. that is that is what he used to credit his great comeback and great run with that that opportunity to really build back from zero. As you mm-hmm. say, so what I'm looking for is the Blue cheating. Sky. Where does the rampant <laughs> cheating fit all this? <laughs> well, that's what I want to know. I'm waiting for Blue Sky yeah. to offer uh, us a way to pay for like a blue check mark and and stuff like that, and that would be great. Then, I uh, think <laughs> I think that is well. The thing is, I actually and I don't want to get too like sidetracked here, but I actually would do it. Like like you know, if it's like if if having a small fee like i think what they said is like the site will always be free but um you can pay uh we may eventually have some bonus features that you can pay a couple bucks a month for or whatever and like if they introduce some things like if there's a little bit of like i don't even call it gatekeeping but just like if there's a way to keep the site from having to like make lots of it's again it's all a matter of time everything everything you know gets worse and corrodes eventually brandon you know but i think if there's you know if there's a way uh to keep it like a little better right Right. and not having to make all these like deals with the devil like these algorithmic tweaks um then uh then i i think that's worth two dollars a month or whatever right so um you know we'll see but brandon let's let's now move on to talk about uh, Patreon, why don't you do a quick Patreon? Um, Absolutely. If social media is not your thing, but you want to kind of keep in touch and get more fantasy content uh, from the cheaters, you can become a, a supporter and go to patreon.com slash always cheating. There are multiple levels of support there. Uh, at the basic level, you get immediate access to our always cheating discord where we got hundreds of uh, friendly and smart supporters on there talking FPL and all sorts of other things. And the great feature that people love the most, of course, is an extra podcast ad free each week that we record Thursday nights, uh, very close to that game week weekend deadline where we can catch up on any final thoughts about injury news, other matches in the midweek that, that we missed uh, before our main feed podcast so it's a great way to uh, say thanks and get involved go to patreon.com slash always cheating and excellent that's the read. no i know i was i was i was getting a uh, I, was, I was i was i was trying to work on sharing a screen off off of uh, what's up with off. us tonight it's just like <laughs> we're we're the just kind of like it's the it's the sunday scaries uh yeah, my wife and i were actually yeah. you know like you were saying take take advantage of no premier league and go out and have brunch with the family mm-hmm. my wife my wife and i were uh, uh eating uh, and we we're talking to the waitress and she says well, what else do you guys have planned for today and uh, I said, I was going to go take a nap. And she said, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to do that. I, I do get the Sunday scaries. Mm. And it got me thinking, you know, I, people who work in the service industry could work like seven days a week. They could wait, work eight days a week. But I was kind of like, you're working right now and you're going to get the Sunday scaries. It was very confusing to me. So I'm still working that out in my head. Yeah, that's true. If you're already working on, like, maybe maybe she has two jobs. Did you, <laughs> she did you ever think about totally, that? Totally. That, yeah. Very very plausible. Very she could plausible be in this economy. Painting houses on Monday early Monday morning. <laughs> well, you're saying she's like an assassin for the for the mob. Is painting houses a uh, assassin? Yeah, code? that was the whole thing. And, and the <laughs> Irishman, <laughs> Robert De Niro's character, he painted yeah. houses. You and I have very different opinions of the Irishman. I, I, to me, that is a three out of five star Scorsese movie, and I, oh, I think for so you, good. it's like it's like a five. There's I know, so much I, depth yeah. of of emotion in that movie, and it really, to uh, especially as you get near the end, just like this real profundity about I know the end I, and I think, old and aging and, and I know. the world passing you by. I, I know, the, and those themes really resonate with you. But you you are older than me, and so maybe in a few years I'll. Think, when I, like 10 yeah. years when I catch up, I'll, I'll watch I, it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. I, 
Well, I remember when I saw Harvey Keitel and the Irishman, I was like, I'm not far behind you, my friend. We'll see you on <laughs> the other like side. 30 years older than you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, um, I don't know. It was right when that de-aging technology was, uh, was like taking off, you know? And honestly, it just, what, like, it was like, we all know what Robert De Niro looked like when he was 35. It's like, and so it was like very weird to like the de-age De Niro really like it threw me well, off. Like the, there's a, something yeah. called a willing suspension of disbelief. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I just, <laughs> I've seen like 47 De Niro movies. It was like, I could not, like he's, his face is too familiar to me. I could not do it. Uh, I mean, it's funny because I, I just saw King of Comedy for the first time. It's like a, that's you know, funny. I watched yeah. that uh, this weekend as well. How about Did that? You really? How do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, yeah, I watched it. On, I watched it yesterday. That's he funny. looks exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Bernhard looked fantastic in that. Movie. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she's got a cool look. I yeah, maybe mm-hmm. we underrate her as an actress a little bit. Always. Uh, have. All right. Well, let's move on, Brandon, to uh, game week twelve to game week. Well, mostly game week twelve. We'll talk about game week twelve like in a, in a more fixture basis in a minute. But at game week 12, 13, 14, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna drop a fixture from this little chart here. Um, let's go, let's move from 17 to 16. There we go. That's a little easier to look at. Uh, maybe that's why I like to look at five fixtures at a time, Brent. It's just easier to look at on my, mm-hmm. on my screen. Um, but we've got, um, just, I thought it was, you know, one thing I try to think about when I'm looking ahead to the next, you know, handful of weeks is, um, you know, I just try to, I mean, like, I guess it's like, this is maybe like the most obvious thing, right. But it's like, just generally like, Am I going to get a lot of home fixtures over the, <laughs> over the next like handful of weeks, right? And if so, like those like you know fixtures to me are are more important than form. Like I'm always going to lean towards fixtures, um, especially when you have these international breaks where I, I feel like form kind of resets a little bit over a two week break. Like I don't know about you, but I feel like uh, like if a player is just like going off and having an amazing run, like mm-hmm. the last thing I want is an international break. I feel like it always kind of like ends that little run of, you know, uh, like yeah. confidence or whatever it is that whatever mystical quality, uh, <laughs> that, 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 I mean, I literally like, I, I just, it's honestly just an element of confidence, right? Like you just feel like mm-hmm. these players like just feel like they're like a little more, I don't know. It's like, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm too, uh, I feel like any, well, anytime you say a word like confidence, it sounds mm-hmm. like you're in this like woo woo, like I don't believe in stats like yeah. world, but Genuinely, you like, could you could frame you can tell it like a player's uh, more confident. You can, and you could you could frame it like the the age old commentary where, uh, you know the the color guy he claims that a player should have converted a chance. Like that's got to be a goal. He's got to be scoring there, yeah. and the implication is it's easy as one two three, and players going through these runs of poor form, I think, illustrate. I mean, how difficult this sport is at the highest level um, for most. I mean, there, there are the rare exceptions that make everything look easy. But, you know, Holland is trying to con- – you th- you've seen Holland convert any kind of chance. But in, 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 in this point, like every chance that Holland tries to convert is <laughs> – quite difficult um so to come out of that uh confidence is a huge issue to take you over that level to actually start converting more more of these chances if you follow what i'm saying yes i yeah i I do and um so when we look ahead to uh that has only a little bit to do with what i'm about to go into here but um i did get we're we're just like we're gonna have to accept brandon that this is us um with the shag year podcast. And I thought I had such a tight theme for us for this week. Mm -hmm. Such a tight, clean theme. Uh, but you know, let's, let's get back to basics then, which is basically, um, who's got good fixtures and who's got bad fixtures over the next five weeks. Okay. That's a nice clean reset for us. Brandon. So, um, looking ahead to the next five weeks, I think it's a little tricky uh, it's like uh, Arsenal are the, like, there's been all this talk about like, oh, like you, you've got to kind of target like Arsenal around game week 12 was in the, when the swing really starts. Right. But that sort of was back when we thought we had a, like an Arsenal team that was sort of fit and firing and relatively healthy. You know, we thought Odegaard would be back, which he is, but now Saka may or may not be back. Um, like talk about confidence, right? This team feels like it's, it's sort of. It's it's a need of like a serious reset. Like maybe the international break accomplish that. It's hard to say, you know, if Saka, you know, especially if he's not injured. Um, but I also think just like in terms of their run, it it's a little 
I, I don't think it's quite as easy as it looked at first glance, or at least it did a few weeks ago, right? Like yeah. Forrest at home in game week 12. I mean, Forrest have been fantastic this season. Right? I mean, yes. I know they just, they, they, they had a tough match against, uh, against, uh, Newcastle, Newcastle right. Yeah. But, but, you know, previous to that, they'd, they'd been really strong all season, both, you know, defensively and, um, and, you know, in terms of their, like, I mean, their attack is, 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 is mostly just Chris Wood, but it's, it's worked out quite, I mean, like Callum Hudson-Odoi has had some moments and, and Morgan Gibbs White, when he's been healthy, has, has been good as well. Uh, but regardless, not an easy match. A way to West Ham. Okay. That's, that's not a bad one. Uh, yeah. given, given where they are. Although if West Ham end up sacking their manager in the next week and a half, then, then maybe they're, um, Maybe that becomes a little tougher because that's that is what happened with game week fourteen, right? Is Man United suddenly, like suddenly Bruno feels like he's maybe like a little bit back on the table as mm-hmm. as, a, as an option, um, and I don't think that that is a um, like a, a straightforward or easy match anymore. Especially if you look at their kind of defensive um, Arsenal defensively, right? I mean, looking at all three game weeks 12, 13, and fourteen, and and then if you want to include fifteen as well, a way to Fulham, like maybe I see two clean sheets there, right? I don't see three. Uh, uh-huh. Definitely definitely not four. I mean, not the way yeah. that they've been playing. And, you know, Ben White now is injured as well. So there's like just a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of problems right now with the, with yeah. the squad. Yeah, I, I'm with you on this read of the Arsenal run. You have the combination of these fixtures that m- most of them you could see going any which way. Uh, very few of them you you like can tell the exact story of what's going to happen combined with Arsenal not being in a good run of form. Does right. the international break fix that? We have no earthly idea. And I right. think betting on that feels bad to me. So, uh, you know, like overextending on Arsenal right now and how I would define overextending on Arsenal would be, uh, I guess, punting on uh, on somebody who's not Gabrielle. Right. And punting on anyone who's not Saka, like Gabriel and Saka, feel like the only Arsenal players that you would even touch with the ten foot pole. Maybe Raya, of course, if you already have him. But yep. double Arsenal defense, I would not co-sign on that. No, uh, no, 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 I not agree. at all. And uh, in general, we, we, just like we, spending time and energy trying to find defenders. It's probably yeah. like a fool's errand at this point. Yeah. Like again, again, I I've said this a lot on the podcast, but I, I do think come January, February, I think we will see the great reset. Kind of see it every season, right? Where teams figure it out, find a system that works best for who they've got, who's healthy, right? Um, and and I think we will see a lot more clean sheets. But the first half of the season has just been a mess in terms of finding good defensive prospects. Yeah. Yeah, another injury news item from this week is Trossard came off the pitch during a Belgium match. I think it was as today. Does yep. that mean Martinelli is like some sort of a punt? But again, I don't think either of us are really in the mood for an Arsenal punt right now. And Martinelli are just kind of chasing the one goal he scored yeah. last week. I mean, He's done really yeah. done nothing else this season. If Saka were healthy, right? Like if we... If he's fine and he starts training on, if he's back in training on Tuesday and he's, uh, we just don't know, right? I mean, he left, when did he leave the match this weekend with the injury? It was like, uh, on the 80th minute, less, I think. Less, was he, okay. So it was a bit, a bit late in the match, but still, um, but it was, you know, he had to be forced. It was off, orchestrated. So. I'm was, going or, yeah. deep state on this one. You are, are you really? Do you, I, yep. I think he's probably properly injured. I mean, given that they're playing Chelsea at home, it was, a you know, it was, a that was a match they really needed to win. Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah, um, I, mean, I know you're joking, but I, I, I suspect that he was um, genuinely uh, sure. forced off. Um, sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so Arsenal, yeah, a little bit tricky, I think. And and Saka, there's really nothing we can even say on this this current pod because we just don't know where he's going to be uh, in a couple of days. I think if he's back and healthy, he's a genuine uh, buy. Um, even, even given Arsenal's form, just because he's involved in everything that they do, right. He's involved in, in, mm-hmm. in their attack at all times. And it's, he just has maybe the highest floor outside of maybe Mo Salah in terms of any fantasy prospect in the game, right. It's just so easy for him to sneak his way into, um, five points, six points, right. Even when he is not kind of, even when he's not having a great game or not super sure. involved, you're like, ah, like Saka got you know, an assist and a bonus point, like again, like I don't know how he did it. 
We saw him get bonus earlier in the season without any attacking returns. Like this right. is how right. um, central he is to the team and also how the bonus point structure is currently favoring the way he plays. So, right. yeah, it, he's, right. it's, it's a good buy, all things considered true. Yeah. So the other teams that have really strong fixtures over the next couple of weeks, uh, we've got two kind of bottom half of the table clubs in, in Bournemouth and Ipswich. I mean, Bournemouth have actually been pretty good and kind of a fun team to watch this year. And I think especially over the last couple of weeks as, uh, as Evan Nilsson has, I think I'm saying that right, right? Evan Nilsson, uh, yeah. as, as Evan Nilsson has really come on. And honestly, you know, talking about uh, possible transfers, if Vardy were out, Evan Nilsson in would not be the worst transfer. I mean, it would, it would save me a fair amount of money. It actually might allow me to still make the, um, the, the switch from one of my midfielders, one of my cheap midfielders over to Saka. Like if you were healthy in a week or so, I mean, what is, so Evan Nelson, I'm just going to pull this up as we're talking here, Brandon, his, uh, so he's, he's, yeah, he's cheap. He's 5.9 million. Like he's even cheaper than I realized. My God. Um, and he has, uh, he has, uh, he scored in his last three matches and he had assist in the match before that. So attacking returns in four straight matches. And yet he is still down 0.1 on his starting price. He is owned by 1.6% of managers in the game. And our good friends at the hub have Bournemouth's next run of fixtures as the strongest <laughs> run of fixtures of any team. Yeah. Like it is not a bad, too. he's on pens too. So, and, 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 you know, Semenyo may have a little bit of an injury as well. So possibly even stronger there. So, I think, and also, I think he does pass the eye test. Like, I feel like yeah. he looks good. Like, he looks like a, a a great buy for Bournemouth. He does have that profile of a of a forward that you could see really just quickly grow into the league. Like he he's not shying away from the uh, basically the spirit of the Premier League. Reminds me a little bit of Ollie Watkins mm-hmm. in the way that he plays, where he uh, is his game is all about movement and strength. Yeah, and I, I he is, he like fills that MFFA like make fantasy fun again sort of player profile too like this is a guy who I agree like I he is what part of what is making Bournemouth really fun to watch right now and just like uh, the next five fixtures for Bournemouth like you tell me where the bad one is here for for their at least for their attacking players home to Brighton away to Wolves home to Spurs away to Ipswich. Home to West Ham. It's a great I, run. I mean, there's not a bad. I mean, maybe defensively they I have could to get this guy some, right now on the pod. Oh my god! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's it's it's an exciting run for them, and and I think I think he's a really good buy. And I also I think he's a real uh, make fantasy fun again buy because his ownership is so low, right? And so sure, you totally. can kind of it's a good chance to get him. I mean, God, you know, congrats to everybody who got him already because. Um, you know, he's all been ten of the last couple of weeks. Yeah, all ten of you exactly. Um, uh-huh. And then the other, the other squad that has a nice run, uh, not uh, it, like it pretty, pretty diminishing returns. Really, once you get past the top two, I think, but um, or at least more of a mixed bag uh, is uh, Ipswich. They've got uh, Man United at home, which again, I think from an attacking point of view is fine. Like, I, I think this is going to be like a lot of Ipswich matches this year, which is like a, that's like a three-two win for somebody right uh mm-hmm. something like that uh forest away pretty tricky match palace and bournemouth at home so not bad and then wolves away so um i again i i think it's fine from an attacking perspective it's they're a little the problem is from a fantasy point of view it's a little more chaotic with them right like you kind of it's you know you have leaf davis who you can't really own in fantasy because they concede so many goals um you know i mean you have liam did lap who you know, I think it's, I think it's like a good own, but maybe, um, maybe his ceiling isn't like crazy high. Would you say, I mean, what do you think about Liam Delay? If you had him for like well, four weeks so far? Yeah. I mean, he's got, he has two double digit weeks, yeah. game weeks already this season. And for a player on that's a true. promoted side, I'd say that's a pretty relatively high ceiling. Yeah. You're there's, right. I guess he just had 11 There's an inconsistency and, yeah, to yeah. Delap, which is frustrating. But if you just look at, since he scored a brace against Aston Villa in game week six, he's had one, he's had two blanks. So he's right. had two out of six blanks. That is incredible for a 5.6 million forward. So yeah. I think he, it, you put him in the same camp as Evan Nielsen. So if you have the money to do Evan Nielsen, I think we're both saying that's the move. If for whatever reason right. you're short and you can only afford 5.6, Liam Delap is 
well, you'll be you'll drive Liam to lap off the lot today, and you'll be a happy customer. Yeah, I I agree. I I still um yeah I, I was probably underselling him a little bit um there, and I think uh, given given their their strong run of fixtures, I think he's I guess yeah. I do like him just a little bit less than Evan Olson, but I think you you summed but it up nicely there. Leaf Davis he is is like he's his sort of like vibe is inflated by his 10 point haul against yeah. Lester. Beyond that, he's just really surviving on meager assist points and no clean sheets. So I think the problem with Leaf Davis is you really should be filling the Leaf Davis slot in your team with a 4 million defender. Cause right. you're going to find it very hard to start this guy. Like if I own Leaf Davis, like, as fun as he could be to have in your fantasy team on a particular game week, it's going to be less fun just like rarely being able to justify playing him, starting him. Do you think you'd like him more or less if his name was spelled L-E-A-F instead of L-E-I-F? Less. Less. <laughs> it's I, I I don't know. I got to think that one through a little bit. Let's let's okay. come back to that. I want to I want to yeah. consider a little bit more. It's sort of, um, sort of kind of yeah. like a Viking feel, like Leif Erikson, sort of a vibe yeah. I'm sure that's where I'm sure that's spelled. where it comes yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's. Um, yeah. And then and then you have you got Villa below that. Villa have what are the best kind of home fixtures of the next four right there. Um, mm-hmm. I can't believe much fixture talk we're doing in this pod, but you know it's we we, we almost never do this actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they they have uh, Palace, Brentford, and Southampton at home in three of the next four. So uh, let's Brandon put our you know hands together and pray that uh, Ezri Kansa is is. is healthy because um, they're really it look, I mean well I guess the Brentford match is tricky just because Brentford can score on anybody, but yeah. um, certainly I see a couple of clean sheets um, ahead for Villa. I do as well. And this is, that's Emery. Like when the going gets tough, I feel like Emery will fall back on his ability to set up a team to, you know, at least keep clean sheets, play well defensively. Yeah. I think there's like a, they have an interest, like it feels like they're trying to integrate a lot of young attacking midfielders into their squad. And I think they maybe have some, some growing pains with that, right? Like with Ramsey yeah. and, and then you have this problem with Leon Bailey, um, just like is unplayable all of a sudden. Right. And he was excellent last season. So I feel like that's, that's become a little bit of an issue too. And so I, I wonder if that's sort of forced their hand a little bit. Then you've got players like Tielemans who, I mean, he's a deeper player, but it's like, he's not always like a automatic, but kind of needs, I don't know. It's like an interesting, um, I think you know, Bailey's, right Bailey's going to be smarting from that humiliation uh, down in Kingston, Jamaica this oh, this weekend or on Thursday night. U.S. really yeah. made Bailey invisible, and I hate to see what the U.S. are going to do to those those guys in the U.S. tomorrow, Monday this, night, the second leg. Yeah, is, mm-hmm. is that Monday night? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah, Concacaf ch- Champions Cup, Nations Cup, League, Cup, Nations, Nations League. League. Yeah. Yes. Garbage. Yeah, you love it. Nonsense. You love yeah. it. Yeah, I hate this. I hate. I hate. I hate that they've turned friendlies into cups that we're supposed to care about. Brandon, this is my own. This is my own cross to bear, though. I know you. You know, I. I have to stop complaining about it eventually. It's, yeah, you uh, do. Some people. Some people like it. <laughs> All right. So I want to move my way down to the um to the 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 squads with bad fixtures. Okay. Uh, but just as I may make my way down here, as I start scrolling down, um, what do you think about Isak? I mean, he has a. Like an okay run, I guess. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, West Ham and Leicester at home in the next you know, couple home matches in the next five. Way to Palace. I don't know. I mean, Palace have been shipping goals, so maybe that's fine. Uh, home to Liverpool could be tricky. Way to Brentford, tricky. Like, now that I've sort of sung the praises of Evan Ilsen, um, I mean, sure, Does is his ceiling as high as Isak's? No. Is he three million cheaper? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Like, is there a strong enough argument for Isak to go over some of the cheaper Evan Ilsen, Delap types that might be um, that might be I, available? I do. He's Isak is just a better player and on a on a slightly better team that will give you better fantasy output. Uh, I think where Evan Nelson were singing his praises because he's going to get a goal mm-hmm. here, or, here or there, uh, maybe everywhere. But Isak is going to get goals plural, 
And that's yeah. the case that you would make. I think that's the extra point, the extra three million that you pay. Yeah. And you know, he's been active for Sweden over the break. He scored against Slovakia uh, yesterday on Saturday. Yeah. He's got another match to go. He's in just he's just in great form. I mean, he's kind of just like all the good things you could say about Evan Ilson, you would say about Isak, but then also add yeah. on to that. You've seen Isak do that uh, in the Premier League for more than a full season. At this point, well, that's like, that's I, that's that, that's safe. fair. Yeah, twenty-one yeah. goals last season, just four on the season for him so far, and I, I think uh, it's a little hard still to get over um, what was a really brutal start for him. Um, many of us, myself included, had Isak to start the season, and uh, that team just really didn't find their footing. For they, they still really haven't to a degree. I mean, it's a it's crazy. I mean, just, even just looking, yeah, was it five wins, three losses, three draws? I mean. I guess it's not terrible, but it just like, it feels chaotic, right? It feels like watching them this season has been, um, you kind of, it's, it's a little like watching Spurs where you're just like, I yeah. genuinely don't know. Like they could beat or lose to anybody. And that's sort of just week in and week out. It's been, I mean, they, 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 you know, they beat Arsenal week before that they lose to Chelsea and you know, it's just like, it's sort of all over the place. They draw with Man City, uh, but then they lose away to Fulham three, one, right. It's like every week there's sort of like a different, um, yeah squad that shows up totally yeah. but yeah isak i would i i think isak is a good move as well for people who feel like they're sort of chasing at mm -hmm. this point in the season so he just does feel like he's got that um you know it's borderline captainable in a phenomenal fixture i i hear you i guess i just feel like um I guess I'm sort of talking myself out of him as we go through this pod, okay. um, just because, yeah. uh, just because he's so expensive, and I have found him over the years to be a frustrating own in fantasy. He is yeah. not the most consistent. I mean, again, 21 goals last season, which is fantastic, but I find it to be kind of a streaky forward, not always easy to to bring mm -hmm. in at the right time. Um, you know, I, I think he's a, he's a pretty. I was talking about Saka as a real high floor player. Um, I feel like Isak is a is a low floor player, right? You might get, you could get. 16 points, but you could very easily get two, right? Where he just a bit of a dirt basement, uh, dirt situation, basement. more of a crawl yeah. space, real people, a crawl under, space the, people under the stairs <laughs> situation going on with him sometimes. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's let's move on to the, the squads that have bad fixtures. As I make my way through here, I can see that Chelsea are really in the exact middle in terms of this, as a Man City, really, some good, some bad. Right, it's like it's sort of it's yeah. all okay. It's not it's not terrible. Although actually, I feel like this the the rating system. If you look at it from an attacking perspective for Chelsea, I actually think it's fine. Like for Cole Palmer, you know, away to Leicester, away to Southampton, and two of the next three. I mean, those are great fixtures for Palmer. He's he's certainly my vice captain this week, for example. Uh, despite the fact that I, he had back to back blanks, and I think it was the first time he had back to back blanks yeah. going back to like game week eight of. 2023 or something right. like that. It was, you know, it'd been like a full year since that had happened. It's funny with Palmer for me because I have been saving a spot for Palmer since he, he scored that goal against Newcastle and uh, was a man of the match. Could have easily scored more coming off of his four goal return yep. shortly before that. And I'm just like, if I don't get this guy ASAP, he's going to bury me. Yeah. And I just kind of held my breath. Uh, not owning him mm -hmm. for the last few weeks, and I've gotten away with it with the, those two blanks. Yeah, but but so that all kind of all went according to plan. But now that it's come time for me to actually get him, you're like, well, a couple of blanks. <laughs> yeah, look at these fixtures. I Are know. you sure you want this guy? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. It, it, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> one of those players where I'm like, no, stick to the plan. Like Paul Cole Palmer is a stick to the plan sort of fantasy asset and um, yeah I I, I, I I do I do agree with you although it is it is certainly uh, I don't know he, he it's been frustrating for sure right he's been a little inconsistent this season and uh, that has been a little frustrating for sure yeah it's just like the mountain of returns and the various fixtures like I will uh, I'll I'll take your blanks sir thank you very much now give yeah. me a 30 point return yeah, but I, I think, okay, what I will say is I still think that he's got, um, I don't know why I keep falling back on this cliche, but I do think that he um, he does have a lower floor than Saka, right? Like, I think that Saka is, like, the ultimate vice captain pick, right? Like, because he, like, Saka's going to get you six points with, like, just remarkable, like, 
you know, metronomic consistency, right? Whereas uh, Palmer, uh, and he can have bigger turns certainly as well, but Palmer is, um, you might get some, you might get some blanks thrown in there. Um, and, but you also, like you said, you might get a 30 pointer. And so um, again, that's why ideally you want both, right? Um, mm-hmm. But obviously it's hard to do. And, and, and this, this being fantasy, it's like, we have this, these great plans and then, and then everybody gets injured and it's like impossible to, you know, <laughs> that's, it should be like uh-huh. on a t-shirt, right? Like you, you have all these great plans and everybody yeah. gets injured. That's really yeah. fantasy in a nutshell. All right. Well, let's, let's go down though, Brandon, uh, and just take a quick look at the teams that have, uh, some poor fixtures up ahead. I don't know how like massively fantasy relevant this is. Um, I will say Man United being near the bottom here. Again, it's one of those things where we're from a kind of defensive perspective. Maybe it's it's not ideal, but from an attacking point of view, certainly a three of the next four are are pretty good, right? Away to Ipswich, home to Everton, uh, away to Arsenal, obviously not great, and then uh, and then home to Forest. Uh, so, I mean, f- from a like a Bruno owning kind of point of view, I think three of the next four look great. Um, Right. I don't know, but, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. So Ipswich away. Yes. Everton. That, that match can be tricky. Sometimes it can be tricky. Then yep. you've got Arsenal. Then you got Forrest who have one of the best defensive records in the league at the moment. And then it's a Manchester Derby right after that. So it's like, this is a great moment for Manchester United and like going into the break, you're kind of like your fantasy brain is saying, well, I need to pay attention to this now. Yeah. And, uh, I think I'm not, I'm, I'm not certain how urgent this is. And I'm, I'm, the Ipswich match falling in the, like their first match coming out of the break with Almiron, 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 uh, mm-hmm. uh, we'll get his name down, uh, at some point. Uh, he, that's kind of a gift to him. And I think it's, if they come out with the new manager and just stomp on Ipswich, it's it's going to go bananas in the fantasy yeah. world where everyone's going to be scrambling to get the Manchester United assets. And then I do think that that run becomes kind of unfavorable in a, in a way. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the, it's just like, we have to see it, right? Like we've just been yeah. down this road in many United fans certainly know what I'm talking about here. It's just like, we've just been down this road so many times with, with Man United managerial switches over the last decade and mm-hmm. they come in and they're the answer. And I don't know. It's like, well, you know, but hopefully, I mean, I don't know, like the league is probably more fun when Man United are really good. Right. They're sort of like, it's like the Dallas Cowboys. Like there's something to be said for like having like a team that you sort of love to hate, right. As a, as a contending team in the premier league and even only going to Solskjaer when he kind of had that team rolling for, for a short spell there, it was like, it, it made it fun. Right. It was sort yeah. of, um, and, and I feel it, you know, so I wouldn't like, there's sort of something about the dourness of the Ten Hag era. Right. Mm-hmm. And just him bringing in Dutch player after Dutch player that, that was kind of flopping here. And it was sort of, and well, I mean, listen, I love the Dutch as much as, as much as the next man, sure. Brandon, you know, talking about just, players from the Dutch league, not actual Dutch people though. That is true. Exactly. And, and those players I could, I could take or leave Brandon, you know, so <laughs> the, that's true. Um, and it's another squad. You're that not has betting a, on an Anthony resurgence, uh, under new management. Uh, no, I'm not actually. I, I, I think when he's at Fenerbahce, he's going to be incredible. Mm, like yeah, 25 absolutely. goal season. Yeah. Uh, the forest who you and I have been big upping for a long time now, uh, are at the bottom of this little table here. And, um, they are, uh, they, I feel like, and you have Chris Wood, it feels <laughs> like the strategy <laughs> is to hold for two weeks, right? Hold for this yeah. switch fixture and then, yeah. and then jettison. <laughs> I, know. I know it was all like, I guess this was a, it basically, I treated Chris Wood like he was cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. I, I brought him in for one fixture, made some money off of him. Yeah. Uh, got no fantasy points. Yep. And, yep. and now I'm kind of like, how do I off, how do I offload this? How do I sell the, put this back into the blockchain yeah. so I can move on to the next uh, board ape? So, um, it's kind of where I'm at with Chris Wood yeah. though. As noted, he's, he's doing his thing during the break. Yep. He could come. He if he's if anyone's going to stun Arsenal, it'll be Chris Wood, and then boom, you've got that really tasty Ipswich fixture. So obviously, he's got two two shots here before we start talking about offloading this guy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and and take a look at game week twelve, Brandon, which is. Um, 
coming up on Saturday. We have a nice early match. So maybe um, maybe we'll get some news on, on Jamie Vardy. It, it, it should be a fun, it's a fun way to kick things off because you do have, um, and I'll share it so you and I can both look at it at the same time. Mm-hmm. But um, so you have, uh, yeah, Leicester host Chelsea. Um, I think that could be a fun match. In my in my brain, Brandon, the first the first match out of international break tends to be a kind of high scoring affair, a little bit, a little bit loose, a little bit shaggy. So I'm yeah. hoping, or, or it's the other way around. It's like a nil nil or a three, three, right. It's like, it's one of those, one of those two. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I think, um, certainly, uh, I think Palmer is, a. Uh, uh, I suppose he's a somewhat like a, a little bit of a differential captain. If you want to be a little mm-hmm. different for, for game week 12, I think that makes a lot of sense. Lester are, um, have shown an ability to score against almost anybody, but their defense has been pretty weak all season. So um, I think Chelsea will score a couple on this one. Yeah, it was interesting right before. I mean, interesting not that uh, Palmer orchestrated this. This is to uh, something the press would do. Yeah. But uh, his comments being surfaced in the press right before the international break about how surprised he was to not see more minutes during the Euros under Gareth Southgate. I don't know if that's just him communicating to uh, Tuchel ahead of him taking over or him just basically saying like, hey, I'll see the England squad when you're ready to give me a little bit more respect or something like this. So him not factoring into the break feels like really kind of fraught and definitely not revolving around some sort of a uh, an injury. That's my speculation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes sense to me. Um, uh, Matawake, uh, there was, I was reading about, uh, him today and there was a lot of talk about how his performance in the England match and how Saka has competition now, Brandon, <laughs> after Matawake's performance. Matawake, he cracks me up. Like there's that only one thing that guy is going to do when he gets the ball. What's that one thing he's going to do, Josh? Score a goal. I don't know. Shoot. Well, he's going to shoot, shoot yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Hey, we want that in fantasy, though, don't we? We do, I yeah. guess. But not really, because he's not <laughs> often in the best position when he chooses to shoot. Okay. So what we want in fantasy are, are a guy surrounding our real guy, Cole Palmer, to be passing the ball. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, that, that's that's true. That's fair. All right. Um, so in terms of a lot of these other fixtures, we kind of have to wait on some injury news, really, to, to know what to... What to say? I mean, uh, Arsenal Forest, again, it really depends on what we, you know, who's healthy um, on the Arsenal squad. Villa Palace, kind of the same way. Um, I think uh, the Man City Spurs match, which you pointed to um, uh, at the start of the pod, I think it's going to be really interesting. I am not as confident as, I mean, sure, yeah, obviously, like, this is not a match where you're like, you need to think about selling Holland or, or, or doing anything ridiculous like benching him. But, um, I don't necessarily see this as, um, a clear win for, for Man City. I think this could be another tough match for them. I think that it could be, uh, I mean, Spurs, I think would even have an outside shot at winning this match. Right. And so, um, uh, I mean, they're just, you know, if, if the, like the entire back line is injured for Man City and they're already struggling, right. To sort of like to sort of move through the middle, like Ederson mm-hmm. can't like, create every assist, you know, it's like, they have to like be able to move from, you know, I mean, it's not very obvious, but like, you just gotta be able to move from the keeper to the defenders to without Rodri. Right. It's just, it's just been a struggle to like build, build up an attack. And so, um, if a bunch more players are, are going to be out this, this coming Saturday, then I think that just, again, is going to be a match where they're going to struggle to, to dominate, uh, the opposition the way they typically have done at home. The Rodri injury has exposed just how horrible the, manage the the club management of the defensive sort of unit at city has been like there's just uh, guardiol was it very much a, a was a great signing but he's not there to shore up the back line yeah. start attacks he's doing his own thing off on the on the left sure so yeah and so if you in this match if you focus on spurs yes we'll point they're missing two center backs they're not really missing anybody else then you look at City and you're like, well, they're kind of like missing everybody, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I take your point. Yeah. Uh, it it really is. Can Can City manage to just put their game plan yeah. into practice? What whatever players they yeah. have, and if so, Holland's going to get his chances. But yeah, this is not going to. There's yeah, it's definitely not going to be a route. And I think no. 
I think best case fantasy wise is that it's going to be like a four, four yeah, uh, where everybody's scoring Solanke. Yeah. Play, play him with confidence. Uh, I think in this match. Yeah. And one of the better, you- one of the better late Saturday games we've had in a while too. Like I I'm actually surprised they didn't make this a Sunday match. I guess you just can't have the same couple of squads all the time on Sunday, but um, Ipswich man United was the, has become the featured match on Sunday instead. So, which I, admittedly, I am interested in. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm very curious what happened. That should be a fun game. Uh, but, I think it, it yeah. probably has something to do with Champions League fixtures yeah. in the midweek that maybe that uh, yeah. the the Champions League teams get to play Saturday just to give them more prep time for the midweek match. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they've always been that like nice to the to the teams mm-hmm. though, right? But yeah, I mean that that, that probably is a factor. Um, and then the next day, uh, we've got uh, Liverpool, Southampton. Again, I would love positive news on Trent, but not expecting it. Um, and uh, and then that Man United Ipswich match. And then we end with a uh, a kind of like a, one. Uh, you know what it is? It's the classic uh, no European fixtures game that you get on a Monday. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's like a little bit better because the teams are kind of pedigreed teams <laughs> or whatever. But yeah. uh, Newcastle West Ham, it's like. Kind of a weird one, right? Like just so like that. Some uh, narrative yeah. with the teams, yeah. and yeah, should really yeah. be on Saturday, bunched up with six other games, so we don't really have to watch it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's again, we'll come back to that Isak question, Josh. I mean, yeah. uh, this this is the one reason to really go for Isak is your Monday will be that much I more know. fun, juiced. Yeah, but if you had to, okay. If you had, if you could swap the Monday game with one other match this weekend, what match would you? I mean, let's exclude Man City, any, any team that could play. Fulham Wolves, exactly. I think, is a good Monday exactly. match. Yeah, totally agree. Bournemouth Brighton, I put that one there too. Those would both huh. be fun. Uh, all right, well, that is that's your weekend. I think in terms of captaincy, we talked about it a little bit already. I think uh, Salah is just the the clear captain pick. Um, he uh, didn't uh, basically. Egypt said, um, you know, take the. We don't need you right now. Take the time. Thanks, but no thanks, Mo. Thanks, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, rest up. So you have a fully rested Mo Salah, uh, Liverpool team that are, I mean, Mo Salah is such a, like, and that guy's like, he loves being a front runner, right? Like most, like yeah. Mo Salah, when, like when they're good, he's even, he's like, he's got like a sort of Tiger Woods-ish quality, right? Where it's right. just like when he's on top, he's even better. Where's and so, red? what's that? He wears, he wears red. red. Just, he wears red. Exactly. Like he wears Tiger. red. Yeah. So, uh, and it's, it's a Sunday too. So um, I think that it's, um, oh. I just think that it's a great, it's a numerology you know, corner over here. Yeah. It feels like a don't overthink it captain pick. If you have Sal, I think he's a great yeah. pick. I think, I think Holland is fine because Spurs cannot keep clean sheets. And so, um, mm-hmm. Man City will score one or two goals and, and Holland will be involved in those goals. Um, everybody else I would say is slightly trickier. I actually think Isak is a pretty good captain pick as well. If you want to go mm-hmm. off the board, uh, Palmer, I just, I guess I just don't like him as much, although I plan to vice captain him just because of the little dip in form the last couple of weeks. Um, and it being the first match of the international break, which again, I like it just it's just unpredictable. I, you know, I think that match can be a little bit like shaking the rust off. I don't know why 730 versus a match that starts two and a half hours later <laughs> is really any different. But so in my head, it feels yeah. like that one is like a weird. It's like they all know in their head that they're the kickoff match for the Yeah. Really. And all these all these midday kickoffs, they get to watch Lester Chelsea and be like, ah, I Don't remember do that. now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. That's how you kick the ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. So that, that's, that's our pod for today. Uh, hopefully this was helpful or at the very least interesting or fun to listen to. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday with a, uh, game week 12 preview podcast, hopefully with a little more, uh, injury news, uh, to report. Uh, and, and maybe Brennan, you and I can talk on that pod a little bit more about the moves we plan to do. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't even really know yet because, it, I mean, it's it's boring, but I just have to wait on the severity of these injuries before I can decide. I mean, six with, with six flag players, you just cannot make a move a week out, right? You've got to wait as long as you totally. can. Totally. A little a little news would be helpful yep. for sure. Um, great. Well, uh, if you like what you hear, you want to tune in for that Patreon podcast, you can go support us and throw a nickel in the in the tip in the jar cup. at yep. patreon.com slash always cheating and at the end of every episode of course we thank our producers josh i'll throw it to you to say thanks to the big dogs
Great. Uh, thanks to Mike DiPietro, Trevor Ingerson, Dave Wegner Lodal. Dave is not on Blue Sky yet, Brandon. I gotta, I gotta push him to get him on there, I think. Our buddy Chris Howell is on there. That's what made me think of it. Chris is mm. posting all about Tennessee on there. They had a tough loss uh, this weekend, but I think they're still going to make the playoff. Uh, Andy Penn, Nick Wright, Lazarus Yanos, Jesse Halstead, Brian Chin, Bobas Coon, Blair Jacobson, Todd Byerly, Andy Portlock, Dan Parsons, Terrence O'Donnell, Kerry Swanson, Jefferson Turner, as he does it, Francis Moore, Sam Shower, Craig Jackson, Caleb Robbie, Brian Clark, Thomas Tisloff, Fro Jacobson, Gareth H., Shalon F. Kadakia, Rishi Nigam, Noan Louise, Travis Grant, Linus Venerstrom, Matthew Skinner, Ben Coombs, Eric Kite, Rune Sandberg, James Murray Wood, uh, part of the three Jameses, Brandon. I know that's how you like to say it. James. The three Jims. Yeah, the three Jims. James Murray Wood, James C., and James Holland, Scully, and of course, last but not least, Craig at Total Maths Tutoring. Brandon, where can people find the podcast? Oh, uh, you can find us wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. They just give these things yeah. away. Yeah. And uh, that's how it works. Slash YouTube show now. <laughs> yeah, you can find us on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash at always cheating. Just search for it. Every podcast app and wherever you do, give us a thumbs up, a like, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And as Josh mentioned, follow us on Blue Sky at always cheating fpl just search always cheating up there and wherever else you get social media you can probably find us there too all this information and more is at your fingertips at alwayscheating.com thanks everybody we'll see you on thursday or next sunday bye